here in one of the world's biggest cities, the buildings reach for the sky. The same could be said for the athletes at Yuan Shen Stadium. Hundreds of the best recurve archers stepping up to the shooting line trying to make their mark. The 2013 Archery World Cup season just beginning. After a long winter, it's finally time to take aim, using everything in your quiver. Shooting in a city with lots of liquid sunshine, laser focus and total concentration was even more critical under these conditions. With so many competitors and so much at stake, nothing less would do. And when the shooting was done, the smoke had cleared and the scores tallied, only a chosen few were still left standing. Those few competing in the recurve medal matches at stage one of the Archery World Cup. After starting the week with sunshine and warm weather, the rain began to fall on the east coast of China. Not exactly the kind of weather a kid from Arizona is used to, but veterans like Brady Ellison and Katuna Lorik and Ojin Yek have seen it all and learned to deal with just about everything. And so they trudged on through the raindrops in pursuit of their prize. Others from nations known for their precipitation probably felt right at home. Deepika Kumari continuing to prepare for what she hoped would be a fruitful weekend of individual and team competition with Jayanta Talukdar. As it turned out, they all got to leave their umbrellas back at the hotel. The final day of match play here at stage one turned out to be sunny and warm. Almost perfect conditions for the crowd and the recurve archers who saw the morning winds die down in time for the mixed team gold medal match featuring Ms. Kumari and Mr. Talukdar, who seemingly had the misfortune of drawing target number two. We say that because up till this point, all of the day's matches have been won by those lucky enough to shoot at target number one closer to the river's edge, perhaps giving them a better feel for the shifting winds. This pair had already defeated Australia, Japan, and Mexico, and now would be facing the dynamic duo from the States, Katuna Lorig and Brady Ellison. The Americans beating Germany, Russia, and a Korean team featuring Oh Jin Yek to reach the mixed team gold medal match in front of a packed house. Not a single empty seat in the grandstands as the fans in Shanghai turn out in force. We'll join the match after three ends, Ellison and Lorig picking up another point in the third end, building the lead up to eight. India's Talukdar sends a message with his first shot of the fourth end, as does his young teammate who's quickly becoming a household name in her native land. Back in the States, Brady Ellison's had his name in the paper a few times himself, and in this match, he is on his game. So for that matter is Katuna Lorig, who keeps pace with her partner, and the two archers from India. Team India had missed early in the match, falling behind fast in the first round, but they obviously have things figured out now, made the necessary adjustments, leaving a lot of holes in the center of the target. If Brady's phased at all, he doesn't show it. Cool, calm, and comfortable, Ellison looks like he's just out in the backyard shooting a few arrows before dinner. Katuna can't seem to miss either. This incredible athlete who coached Jennifer Lawrence in the Hunger Games and has competed in five Olympic Games for three nations and wants to go once more to compete on the same team with her son, she finishes off the job and sets off a red, white, and blue celebration. India settles for silver while the U.S. team strikes gold in China, winning the mixed team gold medal by a margin of eight points. Final score, U.S. 154 to 146. It was a good match. I mean, it's the way the fields are set out, it's kind of fun. Like, you get a sight mark there, but you don't really pay attention to your first field you're on. And then you kind of start getting sighted in on the second field, and then you just make sure that you do your homework and watch what everyone else does their first couple of shots going into this match, like this morning. And then coming in here, and we kind of had an idea where people's first arrows are going, and you just sight into that, and then hope that you guessed right and go in there and start shooting a bunch give of tens. Up secrets. Yeah, but we make everyone better, then it's more fun. <laughs> China's Dai Zhao Zhang hoping to have some fun competing here in his home country. It's the only chance he'll get this year on the World Cup circuit to shoot on his home turf. For Rick van der Ven of the Netherlands and the rest of his teammates, it would be an uphill battle against the Chinese team. The Dutch dropping a 10-point decision in the semifinals, sending Holland to the bronze medal match. China advancing to the gold medal finals, where they would face the winner of the showdown between France and Korea. The Frenchman fought the good fight, but in the end came up two points short. Gail Prevost and company would shoot against the Netherlands, while Korea would take on China for the gold. That being said, it is on with the show. 
Let's take you to the men's bronze medal match. France versus a team from the land of tulips, a team featuring Rick van der Ven, Rick van den Over, and Chef van den Berg. The Dutch also drawing target number two, which has been all but impossible to win on thus far during recurve competition. Van der Ven, the leader of a young team, he's considered by many to be Europe's leading recurve archer. Among his many accomplishments, upsetting Korea's Im Dong Hyun at the London Olympics. Today, he'll need the help of his teammates against an experienced group from France. If van der Ven is Europe's leading archer, then Gail Prévost is not far behind. He finished second last year in the battle for the Longines Prize for Precision, and he's surrounded by two veterans, Thomas Aubert and Jean-Charles Valadon, a field archery champion. We'll fast forward now ahead to the fourth end and once again you'll see that the team on target one has a large lead. After 18 arrows, France is in front by 22 points with six arrows to go. Insurmountable? We shall see. Chef Van Den Berg nails a nine to start the final end. Not bad. But his teammate, Rick Van Den Over, really needs to pick him up with a ten. Instead, it's just about the exact opposite. At this level, the seven rings just about the last place you want to be, so it's left to Van der Ven to show them how it's done. Well done by the man who's currently the European champion indoors and outdoors. The work is done for the Dutchmen who know what's coming. Gail Prévost can clinch the medal for France with two shots to spare. Now, this is not his best shot of the day, but when you need but five points to wrap it up, a seven will do and it will do just fine. So at this point, it's not a matter of who wins the match, it's simply a matter of how much the margin of victory will be. Valadon, who won a team silver at the World Championships in Italy two years ago, shoots a seven, but it matters not. It's academic at this point, which is a good thing because France doesn't exactly light up the scoreboard with those final three shots. But that's the beauty of building a big lead early on. They had enough of a cushion to cruise home comfortably. No need to rub salt in the wounds. A 16-point victory is more than enough for France to lay claim to the men's team bronze medal. So if you're shooting a recurve bow, uh, the first day of your competition will be the qualification competition. And for this year, we're using the feet around. And this consists of 144 arrows shot over four distances. So gents will be shooting 90 meters, 70 meters, 50 meters, and 30 meters. The women, however, will shoot 70 meters, 60 meters, 50 meters, and 30 meters. The person that has the highest score will then be given the highest seeding, and then we always go down to the lowest cut, which is 104. So once the seedings and the rankings are issued, the top eight athletes that have scored the highest scores will then get a first and second round bye. The remaining athletes will then face, face each other head to head, similar in tennis, the highest seed goes against the lowest seed, and uh, whoever wins the match proceeds through until the gold medalist remains. Each athlete will shoot three arrows. Whoever scores the most points wins that set. However, if athletes tie, then they'll share that set by getting one point each. The athlete that reaches six set points first will then win the match and proceed through to the next match. However, if athletes tie and they get five set points each, then it requires a sudden death shoot off. This happens where each archer will shoot one arrow. Whoever gets closest to the cross wins the match. So even if you both shoot a 10, it's the person that hits the cross that wins. Our thanks to Chris Marsh for the tutorial. A great look at what these athletes have to do running a week-long gauntlet just to make these medal matches here along the River Boulevard. All right, it's time to go one-on-one -on -one. once again. It's time for the women's bronze medal match, and this is an intriguing matchup between Korea's Zhu Hyun Jung, who is vying for a bronze medal after dropping a 7-3 decision to Deepika Kumari in the semis. She's 31 years old and unranked right now. Don't let that deceive you, though. Back in 2008, she won a team gold medal at the Olympics in Beijing. In 2009, she won two gold medals at the World Championships, and in 2010, captured two team gold medals in the World Cup competition. She's drawn a difficult opponent, Tan Ya Ting of Chinese Taipei. Only 19 years old, she's 12 years younger, but she's ranked 19th in the world, finished 9th at the Olympic Games in London, and earlier in the day was a member of the first team from Chinese Taipei to win a World Cup gold medal. 
Ten Yating lost the only previous meeting with Zhu Hyun Shung, so she's out to settle the score. And after four sets and a seesaw match, we're tied at four set points apiece. Winner of the fifth set gets the medal. Loser goes home empty-handed. Tan Ya Ting with a nine to start things off, but her Korean competitor quickly takes advantage of that. Tan Ya Ting takes her time, takes dead aim, and drills that shot in the 10 ring. Now, it's been a few years since Ms. Zhu's been in position like this with a chance to medal, and she is going for it. Another bullseye to maintain a one-point lead in the deciding set. Tan Ya Ting leaves us guessing. Is her last shot on the line or is it a nine? They put an asterisk by the score and we'll leave it for the judges to decide. Of course, it's all a moot point if Ms. Zhu shoots a 10, but she decides to make the match more dramatic. That nine won't matter if Tanya Ting's last shot is also ruled to be a nine. If the judges deem her shot is indeed on the line though, she'll get 10 points, the match is tied, and we're going to a shoot off. A panel of judges closely surveyed the situation and as they do, there are some anxious moments for both archers. The judges reach their verdict, the shot is counted as a 10, and the match does go to a shoot-off. One arrow for each archer, the shot closest to the center determines the winner. Tanya Ting takes the first stab at it, and scores a nine. That leaves the door wide open for Ms. Xu, and she walks right through it into the winner's circle. The final shot just had to be closer to the center of the target, and there's no doubt about that one. The shoot-off and the match and the bronze medal all go to the Korean, making a comeback here at the Archery World Cup. Zhu Hyung Jun adds to the growing medal count for her country in recurve competition. Her final shot will go down and count as a nine, but the bottom line has her winning this thrilling match by the final score of Six to five. Time for another flashback. Tokyo 2012, Jennifer Nichols of the U.S. in the World Cup recurve bronze medal match against yet another great Korean archer, Choi Hyunju, who captured the bronze medal with a winning score of 6-4. to four. She was followed onto the field of play by her fellow teammate, Kibo Bay, who would do battle with India's Deepika Kumari for the gold medal. Intense battle. It was tied at four with Kumari up by a point heading for the final shot. Shoot at 10 and the gold medal belongs to India, but a shocking seven once again provides the opportunity and Kibo Bay certainly had the motive. Coming off a gold medal performance at the Olympics in London, she comes through in the clutch with a nine and snatches victory from the jaws of defeat. 2012, an incredible year to remember for Kibo Bay. All right, back here in Shanghai, Kibo Bay sitting out this gold medal match on this sun-splashed afternoon. She's just another spectator watching yet one more brilliant recurve archer from her national team. Yuno Ki, age 28, unranked and off the radar screen for the past few years. Ranked number one in the spring of 2011, she had burst on the scene in 2008, winning six World Cup medals while reaching the World Cup finals in Lausanne. And oh, by the way, she also took home two medals from the Olympics in Beijing. Now, after some time away from the World Cup circuit, she's back, and she's in the gold medal match against Deepika Kumari, who had to settle for that silver medal last September in Tokyo, knowing the gold medal was in her grasp. She, too, has a score to settle after having lost her only head-to-head -head match with Yuno Ki. Now, Deepika's 3-1 in match play so far this season, and she's got a lot going for her. She's shooting at target number one, the winning target for every match thus far on Recurve Sunday in Shanghai. Again, we pick up the action later in the match. Kumari's won two of the first three sets, leads it four to two. Ms. Yun comes out firing, intent on winning the fourth set and tying up the match. Hey. Hey. Oh. Ms. Kumari will counter with a 10 of her own. Now this is where things get interesting. Some wondered whether Yun Oki released this shot before the horn. But the shot and the score were allowed to stand, and the Korean put the pressure squarely on the shoulders of Deepika Kumari, who faltered just a little bit with that nine. The Korean with a chance here to put this set out of reach. But that nine means Kumari can tie the set and split the points if she delivers a 10. 
She falls short. Yuno Ki takes the set, and instead of Kumari leading 5-3, to three, we're all tied up at 4-all. The match is up for grabs. It's up for the taking. Kumari will take the first shot of the fifth set. Okay. Unable to seize control of the situation, Kumari is now at the mercy of Yuno Ki, who is about to give her a reprieve. Given new life, Deepika fails to find the ten ring. And once again is in a vulnerable position, depending on what her Korean counterpart does. Crowd goes silent and remains silent after Yuno Ki shoots an eight to fall behind by one in what could be the deciding set. All Kumari needs to do is shoot a bullseye and the gold medal is hers. Easier said than done though. Unbelievably, she shoots an eight, and now the advantage swings back to Korea. Shoot a nine, and we're headed for a shoot-off. Shoot a ten, and it's all over. Game, set, match, it is over. Just like Kibo Bay last September, Yuno Ki snatches victory from defeat and comes from behind in the final set. In fact, comes from behind to win the last two sets after trailing four to two. Yuno Ki earns a hard-fought victory and savors the moment. 항상 견제하고 있는 선수였고 이번 게임이 쉽지 않은 게임이에요. I know Deepika Kumari very well. She's a talented archer, so she could be a world champion. Now I will keep training for the World Cup and the World Championships. 내보단 한수하래. Here's a look at the early standings in the women's recurve. Yuno Ki collects 25 World Cup points and is off to a great start in her quest to reach Paris and the World Cup finals. Those 21 second place points will provide some consolation for Deepika Kumari, and Tanya Ting goes home without an individual medal but picks up 15 points. Moving on now to the men's bronze medal match and Japan's Shungo Tabata has nothing to fear from target number two now that Yuno know Ki went and proved you can win shooting at that target. Tabata, 25 years old and unranked. That will change though regardless of the outcome of this match. Tabata has been a member of the Japanese national team for the last four years and this is undoubtedly the biggest stage he's ever performed on. So far this season, four and one in match play and off to a great start. In this match, he will be challenged by Malaysia's Kairul Anwar Mohammed, a 21-year-old who came to China ranked 15th in the world. A member of his national team for two years, Mohammed scored an impressive win in a quarterfinal shootoff with Holland's Rick van der Ven. Mohammed off to a 3-2 start on the year after reaching the quarterfinals of the Olympics in London last summer. After the first three sets, Tabata has the 4-2 advantage. Mohammed inconsistent most of the day, and that trend continues with his first shot. Tabata, hoping to close out the match in this set, is unable to take advantage with his first shot. Mohammed picks up his game with a 10, and now he's got a realistic chance of winning the set and tying the match. Of course, he needs some help from Tabata. And that help is not forthcoming. We're tied at 18 in the set, and with this third shot, Mohammed throws down the gauntlet. Now it is up to Tabata. And Tabata comes through with a great shot under pressure to tie the set and split the points. The Japanese archer maintaining a two-point lead and needs just one more set point to win the match. All is not lost, though, for Kairul Anwar Mohammed. Win this set, the match is tied, and you can win in a shoot-off. Theory looks good, sounds good, as he appears to stick this shot on the line. The theory looks even better when Tabata leaves this shot left in the eight ring. But Mohammed does not accept the gift, and when he answers with that eight, well, that presents Tabata with a golden opportunity to tie the set at 17 all. Critical shot coming up for Mohammed, and he will leave his shot wide right for another eight. At this point, it's out of his hands. This is clearly Tabata's set and match to win, and when it mattered most, Shungo Tabata was able to come up with the nine points he needed. 
But wait, did he actually need 10? Was that first shot of the set by Mohammed on the line? The judges have to get out the magnifying glass and make the call, and the call comes in, and the ship comes in for Shungo Tabata. Mohammed's first shot is deemed to be a nine, so Tabata wins the set by one point, giving him two set points for a 7-3 victory. And to the victor go the spoils. A bronze medal at stage one in Shanghai is the fruit of his labor. Shungo Tabata winning Japan's only medal at stage one in Shanghai. More great memories now from Tokyo's World Cup Finals where Im Dong-hyun of Korea was one of the favorites, but Gail Prevost didn't get the message, defeating Im Dong-hyun to claim the bronze medal. Then left it to Mr. Im's countryman Kim Woo-jin to carry the torch for Korea. All he had to do was battle America's Brady Ellison, who was shooting for his third straight gold medal at the World Cup Finals. Brady got his first one in Edinburgh, his second one in Istanbul, but that third one would prove to be elusive. As the relentless rain poured down, that third gold medal slipped away. Kim Woo-jin driving home the point that on any given day, anyone is capable of beating anyone in World Cup archery. Back to Shanghai, and this time, the gold medal match pits a pair of Korean teammates against one another. One, a decorated veteran with years of competition under his belt. The other, a new face on the scene, just starting out on the international stage. Meet Jin Jae Wong, just 22 years old, a member of the Korean team since 2010. This will be his first World Cup event, and that's reflected in his world ranking. Three and one in match play this year. He'll be going one on one for the first time ever with teammate Oh Jin Yek. Mr. O, nine years older and has 14 years of experience on the Korean team. Oh Jin Yek, number one in the world, which is exactly what you'd expect after winning the Olympic gold medal in London. Up to this point, Mr. O has had four matches and so far he's won three of the four. Let's move ahead in the match and we'll pick up the action as we get set for the fourth set to unfold. After dropping the first two sets to Oh Jin Yek, Jin Jae Wong was able to take third set and now trails 4-2 in the match. That had to be a big confidence boost for this young man who's picked up his shooting as the match has progressed. Apparently, he now has Mr. O's full and undivided attention. Oh Jin Yek. Answering with a bullseye. Back and forth we go. The stoic Mr. Jin dialing up another 10, another bullseye, giving rise to hopes of winning this set and tying the match at four apiece. Those hopes seem to be well-founded as Oh Jin Yek lands one of his few shots outside the 10 ring. Jin Jae Wong has the opportunity to put this set away and pull into a tie with Mr. O, oh, but for whatever reason, Mr. Jin shoots a nine and gives O oh Jin Yek a chance to pounce, and pounce he does. It is a ten. The set points are split, and Mr. O oh still leads by two, needing only one more point to pick up yet another gold medal. So on to the fifth set, the deciding set. And since he's trailing, Jin Jae Wong shoots first and shoots a nine just outside the center ring. Fortunately for Mr. Jin, Mr. O is not more accurate with his first shot. The challenger can still tie the match and send it to a shoot off, but he must win this set. Jin Jae Wong gives himself a chance and keeps hope alive with a second shot that's spot on. But O Jin Yek rises to the challenge and meets that challenge with a 10 of his own. Down to the final arrows now to decide who gets gold. Considering the fact he's in this situation for the first time, Jin Jae Wong remarkably cool, calm, and collected and battles to the very end with a bullseye on what might be his last shot depending on Oh Jin Yek. If he'd shot a nine, we'd have had a shoot off, but he shot a 10, so it's all over. We don't have to wait long for the answer. Oh Jin Yek ends the suspense and wins a closer than expected match with his fellow countryman, Jin Jae Wong. The final score, six to four in favor of Oh Jin Yek. Uh, 
I know my opponent very well because we spent some time together in Korea. Jin Jae Wong has done very well in his matches, so today I really focused on my shooting. Before I got to the venue, I tried to focus on what I have to do for the match, and that concentration brought me good results today. Oh Jin Yek picks up a check and a beautiful watch from Longines and oh yes, 25 World Cup points. He's the early leader in the men's recurve standings. Jin Jae Wong stands second with 21 and Shungo Tabata will be in the top three as we head to Turkey, the second stage of the 2013 archery World Cup season. Next stop, Antalya, where we'll see you on the beach.